what is up guys so as you can see I got a different layout for my uh, light box um, this is something I, I had and um, it just makes things a little bit cleaner a little bit more light um, we'll use it and see if uh, maybe modify it a little bit so that way it makes uh, our uh, images a little bit better for videos uh, but for now this is what I got so what you all tuned in for is another product review on a few items so this is kind of a general uh, throwback on my original one for uh, calipers and I figure I also throw some uh, two other items in um, that I just recently purchased and I'll tell you why let's get into this re review of these items and let me tell you what I think about them and if they're right for you so first things first uh, let's get the small stuff out of the way so the Gerber it's the Gerber dime uh, Leatherman's pretty good and there's a few other brands that um, have really good uh, small multi-tools uh, the reason why I went with the Gerber one is because it is lifetime warranty so as you can see on the package it uh, says lifetime warranty right there and uh, this is for North America only it says um, so if you're anywhere else um, I don't believe they'll give you the warranty so according to the package that's what it says I haven't broke it so I, will, I don't know yet so the first thing that's cool about this is it has this um, can opener or bottle opener off the edge right here off the side of it and uh, of course you just put your drink or whatever in there and pop it open um, it has this little ring here that you could touch your keychain and it's real compact so as you can see it fits in my hand fairly well um, you can put it in your pocket and not have to worry about it bulging out so when opening it what I like to do is I like to use this little uh, thing here as a little tab to pull on and uh, as you open it of course you you hear that audible click so let's do it again so when you open it it clicks into place that one clicks into place and then you have your little needle nose uh, pliers at the end one thing I noticed that I didn't really like is the gap here so as you can see there's a gap uh, between this nose here and uh, this jaw in this area and the reason why I don't like that is it's intentional so it's not a defect uh, but if you have anything really tiny you have to grab it with the tip of uh, the pliers and you can't really just use the whole uh, nose as a, a gripping point so as you can see you have to use that tip so uh, that's a downside but not uh, a big deal breaker it has wire cutters here of course it has this cut out here to grip anything uh, circular and uh, you could kind of maybe twist a bolt or something small not too big because of course you're not going to be able to apply enough uh, pressure on the diameter of whatever you're turning to really get it out but that's a cool feature and then of course the standard wire cutters um, and then when you put it back in it closes like that and everything goes together so when you first open it on the Gerber side you'll notice you have this little tool here it's like a little blade um, I'm not sure exactly what all these uh, blades are for uh, but this could be if you're camping or whatever and you go fishing you could uh, cut the fish open from the rear all the way to the front or if you're dressing a deer you could cut into or any type of animal you could cut into the bottom and work your way up the stomach uh, if you're an outdoors person it's kind of tiny uh, but it can do the job uh, and of course when, when you're you know dressing a, a animal and actually um, flaying it open 
you don't want to penetrate too deep anyway because if you do uh, you could cut into the stomach area and destroy the meat so you have that and then on the other side of it so as you work to the other side you have a little pocket knife so as you can see it's tiny um, it's about compared to my pinky it's not too big I want to say about an inch so it's substantial enough to you know use for typical uses of what you would use a pocket knife for um, it's not it's sharp but not very sharp so you would have to sharpen that I wouldn't say it's extremely sharp but it will cut through stuff and then on this side so where it says dime you pull out your uh, clippers so you have little scissors uh, these work really well so they're not loose um, so there's no play in the joint area they have this little spring rod here that gives it uh, feedback so that's on that side and then across from it you have two items here you have a little file um, for like your nails or whatever and then on this side you have a flat blade screwdriver so that's pretty cool so of course um, everything's located on the inside of the pliers and uh, that's pretty cool because it, it won't accidentally open up and you won't stab your hand um, if you do leave them open or if you use it for like a couple years and it starts uh, the joints start becoming a little bit loose you don't have to worry about stabbing yourself um, and you could uh, you know that it's gonna work all the time especially with the lifetime warranty you just get a new one right and this is about $15 on Amazon if you're interested in this of course I'll leave the links below um, if you if you're using this for an everyday tool I wouldn't recommend this one I would go with something a little bit bigger and uh, of course uh, I'll leave some of the links that I recommend down in the description below but just remember the larger ones do get a little bit more pricier uh, Gerber their cheapest one is about 26 to 30 dollars and from there it jumps up to like the $40 range Leatherman of course is like about 40 50 dollars all the way up to like 120 um, but yeah those will be linked below and uh, if you're interested <clears throat> so the next item on the list is the Mega Pro um, multi-tool screwdriver and the cool thing about it is it says it's made in the USA so one thing I noticed right off the bat is uh, this collar here up front spins and the rear spins so before we get into any of the other stuff um, let's go over the reason why it spins so when, when you're using the screwdriver in a manner where you're holding this for uh, to keep everything steady you know this is spinning in your hands usually right and you're doing this well with this collar being able to move freely now you could hold it here and spin it spin it here in your hands so that way you don't wear the finish off or uh, it don't slide in your hands and create blisters if you have sensitive skin and then also the back rotates so that way when it's in your palm it spins freely so you could sit there and do that. So as you spin it, it spins in your palm. So you grip it here, twist, let go, and allow it to spin back. So that's pretty cool. And it spins uh, fairly well. So this tool on Amazon uh, has really good reviews. Um, I'm not a fan of the colors like it's okay um, but I wish they did it maybe in black or something or offer different colors um, but you know it's a tool it's gonna get dirty 
and also I'm not a fan of the plastic uh, housing I wish they added some grip in here some recessed uh, silicone grip in uh, this area instead of these little plastic dimples only so that way it feels like it's a more of a quality product and something that feels a little bit better in the hand but it's a multi-tool so not many go to the extent of that unless you're gonna spend like 40 bucks uh, I believe this one was only $18 I'll leave it in the description below if you're interested and when you pull this out of course you're greeted with all the bits and uh, this is where it's rotating so it's pretty cool at first I thought that this would be a weak point but as you can see it spins freely and it's really uh, as a really good uh, fit in there so it's not gonna pull out so let's give an overview of it so that's pretty cool and every time you push it in so when you pull it out put it back in it kind of like sucks back in uh, once it reaches a certain point and uh, that's pretty that's pretty good because it keeps it from just opening up on its own and uh, I think it's because there may be a recess on this area because as soon as you hit a certain point in the screwdriver it sucked it back in so I think it's somewhere in here there's a little probably a little detent or something that allows it to push or cam past a certain point sucking this butt in so when you open this up you greet it with of course the head or the drives and uh, we will go over some of the, the drives that it comes with so for the torques you have a t10 you have a t15 you have a T20, T25. For the flat blade, you have a four, a six. For the Phillips, you have a number three, a double lot. And then you have also, for the Phillips, a number two, a number one. For the square drives, you have, um, a R0, so an R0, R3, and then you have an R1 and an R2, and that completes the drive set themselves on here. Um, one thing I also noticed when popping these in and out, as you can see, they have this uh, fin uh, style clip, so it like um, it wedges the the cut of the uh, the shank into this uh, fin style grip, and they pop in really uh, substantially uh, in the area that they need to be in. So, let's see when you put them in. So as you can see, the fin right there. You you put it in like that and then they clip in and they're really easy to get out because these fins don't uh, carry over all the way to the top so they're just at the bottom so it allows you to fit your fingers behind the tool itself and lift them out okay so that's pretty good <clears throat> one other thing that I noticed because um, I was looking at a lot of um, multi-tool screwdrivers and uh, a lot of them where they lack uh, quality is in this tip so usually they'll just slide in like that and then they would fall out okay so that's no good because if you're overhead like that uh, coming down on a bolt or a screw they'll fall out of course if you're uh, screwing something in the upward direction it won't fall out um, other ones like uh, <clears throat> a lot of the name brand stuff like um, Makita Milwaukee uh, all those uh, tools 
um, they have a, a nice like grip and they have all this fancy stuff but where they're lacking is in the tip uh, a lot of them put a magnet at the end of it so that way when you put this tool in there it clips into the magnet well the downfall on that is you your surface area that touches the magnet is only at the tip of the bit that you're not using so it's not large enough to actually hold it in uh, really good uh, the magnetic uh, field also transfers across this end of the, the screwdriver so it kind of grabs on some of this but not enough to uh, hold it in and the reason for that is because the magnet's not large enough to transfer all its power through the the head of this the driver itself the cool thing about this one uh, the Mega Pro is it has this little ball bearing detent um, so of course when you put this in it clips in so you can hear it click so it takes a little effort to push it in but not too much but enough to know that it's not gonna fall out so it clicks in uh, to pull it out you just pull straight out and you have to apply a little bit of pressure and it pops out uh, perfectly it has the perfect retention for what you would use the screwdriver for so all in all uh, this is a good buy 18 bucks it has all most of the uh, the bits you're gonna need uh, at your job or around the house so this is definitely a thumbs up um, I would definitely recommend this screwdriver and uh, that's why I bought it after doing all this research on what's the best bang for the buck and uh, here you have it so this is the main reason why um, I wanted to post this video was on these calipers of course I have the eye gauging um, uh, regular calipers the six inch that I had from the previous video I'll link that in the description below if you're interested in watching uh, these versus the mid Toyos and uh, of course let's just do a brief rundown on these so you get the power up you have the standard readout here and uh, you have the fractional readout so up to 128 in fractions and then you have the millimeters which displays a large display um, you have a zero and what the let's go over the way you uh, make sure that you get good calipers so some of the things to check not all the things to check but some of them is you want to check the jaw so make sure that this line here has no gap in it if there's a gap that means that this face is not touching uh, the, the opposite face and they may not be parallel so keep that in mind also the jaw up here make sure there's no gap in there and uh, another test that you can run is so you zero it out of course you clean your jaws close it zero it out and move it back and forth at a pretty quick uh, speed and usually the cheaper ones so these ones I think were only like 30 bucks 20 bucks something like that um, but the cheaper ones will usually lose its place so when you do it in a manner like that uh, usually you get the readout and then by the time you go to zero them out at the close point uh, this will read like you know ten thousandths over um, thirty thousandths over so it'll lose its calibration in uh, the position it was supposed to be at these ones as you can see have no issue also another thing to look at is um, the ones I like have a little bar across here and like the Minotoyos and uh, it has two screws and um, another bar across the back and that's to hold your depth um, gauge bar in place so it doesn't flop out and these ones 
uh, in particular, eye gauging in general, have um, it's like a, a flat, um, it's like a flush mount screw, but it's a Phillips and it's the head's large enough to overlap this to kind of keep it in place. Um, it works, it does the job. Uh, the Minta Toyos have slot side to side, so that's not a big concern. Um, it just, to me, having that bar across gives me a little bit extra peace of mind, and um, it doesn't matter for the price, can't complain. Um, $200 calipers versus, you know, $30 calipers, uh, it's definitely a good deal. So, as you can see, these have a large readout. Uh, they have other ones like the Nikos, I believe they're called Nikos or Nikos. And uh, the reason why I didn't get those, those have a lot of reviews on them. But the, uh, the readout here is weird. So you got two large numbers. So your first two numbers here are large, just like this. So you'll have the one, one. And then uh, the next digits will be really tiny. And the reason for that is because they have fractional as well. So the fractions are uh, actually using the same uh, places as the first readout or the the last digit readout and so as you can see you have the readout here but when you go into fraction on these ones it gives you a whole row of uh, smaller numbers here for the fractional side of it and the Nikos are they just use those two digits at the end um, because they're already there so you will have the larger digits here and then uh, the last two digits will be tiny or the last three I should say because it I think they go up to 128 as well so that's one of the reasons why I didn't like those so these ones have about a hundred reviews on it uh, people had good comments on these the Nikos had I believe like 3,000 um, but I mean just having that readout the way it was um, kind of um, I didn't like it it just I know over time like just keep uh, if I kept looking at the readout so imagine how this one says 0.189 and then uh, five so half a thousandths over there so imagine having that on your readout but for these digits here as well uh, it'll get annoying All right, so if you want to see that review, check it out. It comes with the case and everything, so that's pretty cool. It comes with the battery. It came with instructions, the same as that. But the reason why you're all here is for these, um, this review. So of course, you get the caliber, uh, calibration certification here. Um, they did all their measurements and stuff, zeroed it all out, made sure it worked. Um, you have your, of course, your manual, standard, standard stuff, um, how to work it. You have a certificate here saying that they're certified. Um, and then you get the battery, which is a 2032, uh, three volt, uh, battery, just like those. So, of course, you get the case with it. So as you open the case, um, this one has one tab in the center because it's a six inch and these are eight inch so they have two separate tabs that you push in it has a stiff uh, foam cutout to hold your calipers in place and uh, it's really uh, nice this foam this is a softer foam it's kind of spray glued in there uh, but these calipers of course the reason why I bought the 8 inch and um, the reason why I didn't buy the 8 inch before the 6 inch um, was because these were cheaper these were like 30 bucks and these ones are like 56 and I didn't know how good this brand was um, but after using those I decided to get the 8 inches as well and the reason for that is when I'm using it on the 6 inch the issue I was having is I measure a lot of things that are about three inches in diameter 
so three inches would put me out somewhere around here so as you can see it kind of my hand kind of falls off the edge and I'm riding uh, the depth gauge a lot so that was kind of an issue they had it's hard to find but I did see some uh, some 8 inch in this style the easy cal and the reason why I didn't get those was because a lot of people were having issues with them uh, the faces here not lining up correctly and I don't know why the per uh, the process m would be different uh, maybe because they're larger I don't know so I ended up getting these instead so they're the same brand except these are origin cal um, US patent it says same brand the difference between this one and that one is as you can see this one has millimeters and inches that one has millimeters and fractions and inches um, this one has an origin button and a, a absolute zero so you could zero it out and it has an origin where to start the zero from that one just has a zero out button um, this displays smaller that one's a lot larger so in comparison you can see the difference in size uh, I like this display better than the smaller one but this display may crack um, because it's a larger surface so if you accidentally dropped them like that you may crack these ones before you would crack that so that might be something uh, behind the, the design of it uh, if you get the 6 inch in uh, the Origin Cal version, uh, you can get it in fractional. Uh, they do have an option. Uh, this is IP54 rated, and so is this one, so that's the same. Um, when you turn it on, of course you greet it with the standard uh, layout. So I don't know if you can see that. So of course you greet it with that layout. And it reads pretty smooth. Um, I checked the jaws to make sure that there was no uh, gap in there, and there's no gap here. Um, that was all fine. I made sure my screw to tighten it wasn't bent, and then I ran the test of the speed test on it. So when you run it back and forth, it did zero out nicely. So as you can see, it zeroed out millimeters works so that's pretty smooth um, the batteries here on this one I noticed the battery back here it has a little uh, bulge right there and uh, maybe that's an imperfection in the battery uh, compartment itself no big deal um, but I notice if you do push on it hard enough let's see if I can get it so if you get this readout here you push on it hard enough it kind of flexes that but and then changes the uh, number by one